You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vectors and projectiles. The topic of this video is the analytical method of vector addition. And here's the question we wish to answer. How do you use the analytical method to add two or more non-perpendicular vectors? Let's get started. Before we discuss the use of the analytical method of vector addition to add non-perpendicular vectors, let's discuss how to add right angle vectors, like these six north-south, east-west vectors. If I were to add these six, I would lay them out in a head-to-tail fashion, beginning the tail of the second vector at the arrowhead of the first, and the tail of the third vector at the arrowhead of the third of the second, and so forth, until all vectors have been added. Then I draw my resultant from the tail of the first vector to the arrowhead of the second of the last vector. Now, if doing this with the graphical method, I would have done all these vector constructions to scale, and then measured the length of the resultant and converted from that length to the real-world magnitude of vector r. But if I was doing this with the analytical method, I would first consolidate these six vectors into two sets of north-south, east-west vectors. Like I take the 12 east and the 16 and 6 west and add them together to get 10 meters west. And I take the 9 north and the 12 north and the 8 south and add them together to get the 13 meters north. Then I would add these two consolidated vectors, 10 west and 13 north, and draw the resultant. Then I would use the Pythagorean theorem to determine this resultant since it's the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and I would use Sokotoa to determine its direction. The point of this being that once you get every vector listed as just a single north-south and east-west vector, it's quite easy to add them using Pythagorean theorem and the trigonometric function. That's the value of the analytical method of vector addition. So we just learned that adding vectors that lie along the traditional x and y axes is relatively easy. But what about vectors that don't lie along the traditional axes, like these three vectors? If I have to add them, I can still lay them out in a head-to-tail fashion. And I can still draw the resultant from the tail of the first vector to the arrowhead of the last vector. And that resultant still has an x and y side but it's not immediately obvious what the length of the x and y side of this resultant vector is because the three vectors you're adding are not lying along the traditional x and y axes. So we need to use the analytical method. That is, we would need to first resolve this, these three individual vectors into x and y components and then add the x and y components. So here's what I mean by the analytical method. Here you see these same three vectors, and you see them laid out in a head-to-tail fashion. We wish to determine the resultant of these non-perpendicular vectors. And so what I would need to do is replace each single vector with two components. We'll talk about the method of that next. But first, let's just say that the 15 meters at 36.9 degrees translates into these two components, 12 meters east and 9 meters north, and so forth for the other vectors. Now that I have found the components of the three vectors, I add these six components. And what you'll notice on the diagram is that these six components add up to give the same resultant that you'd get if you added the three vectors that don't lie along the perpendicular axes. In other words, the result of adding the six components is the same as adding the three individual vectors. So the key to being able to use the analytical method of vector addition is to take every vector that lies at angles to the north, south, and east, west axes and to resolve them into their components. Like here in the diagram, we would know the length and the angle that the red vector makes with either one of the xy axes. So I form a right triangle with that vector being the hypotenuse of it. And then I use the sine and cosine functions to determine the x and the y components. I sketch out a component along the x side of that triangle and another along the y side of that triangle. And then I use the sine function to relate the length of the hypotenuse and the angle it makes to the side opposite, which is the y component. And then I use the cosine function to relate the length of the right triangle of the hypotenuse and the angle it makes with the x-axis to the x component. You should know that there's a very sweet shortcut for calculating the components of your vector. The, the shortcut uses these two equations you see. 
and it only works if the angle theta in the equations is the counterclockwise angle of rotation that your vector makes with due east. The first video in our tutorial series discussed this counterclockwise from east convention. It's worth a review because this shortcut allows you to calculate the components without ever drawing a triangle and without ever deciding how the angle and the vector's length relates to the x and the y components. It's as simple as taking a vector's magnitude and its counterclockwise from east angle of rotation and using the two equations. It goes something like this for vector a. ax is simply its magnitude multiplied by the cosine of theta and ay is simply the magnitude multiplied by the sine of theta. This gets you the components of vector a. When you use your calculator to do this, you'll get a plus and a minus sign. A plus sign indicates either east or north for the x and y component, and either south or west for the x and y components. So let's take a moment to visualize why this analytical method works. We're going to add the red vector and the blue vector. Neither lies along the traditional xy axis. So what we do is we replace the vectors with their components. The red vector is replaced by these two x and y red components, and the blue vector is replaced by the two blue components. And we add up these four components. This would work because the red vector that is angled to the x-axis is equal to the sum of these x and y components, and the same is true of the blue vector. So adding the four components is the same thing as adding the two non-perpendicular vectors. Now I will demonstrate how to use the analytical method to add non-perpendicular vectors a, b, and c. The process is simplified by the fact that these three vectors are on a background grid of squares which are 10 meters along its edge. I will be collecting my data and placing it into a table with columns x for x components and y for y component. I leave a row in the table for the resultant's magnitude x and y components. Now to begin, I'm going to say the positive direction is to the right and up, and I will determine the x and y components of A. I'll do something similar for B, but I'll say that left and down is the negative direction, and I'll determine its components, and finally I do C. Now that all three components are known, I can take the, all the x components and add them together to get the resultant's x components, and I can do the same thing for y. I'm simply adding up all the x components to find that the resultant lies 30 meters in the rightward direction and 20 meters in the upward direction. So I draw out these two resultants, adding them together in a head-to-tail fashion, and I draw the resultants as a hypotenuse of this right triangle. I wish to determine its magnitude and direction. To determine the magnitude of R, I use the Pythagorean theorem, and I substitute in 20 and 30 for the values of x and y, and I get 36 meters. And to determine the direction of this vector r, I use the tangent function, and I say the tangent of theta is the side opposite divided by the side adjacent. That trans translates into theta equal the inverse tangent of the side opposite to the side adjacent. I substitute 20 in for the side opposite theta and 30 in for the side adjacent, and I use my calculator to calculate theta. 34 degrees is the result. So the resultant is 36 meters at a direction of 34 degrees counterclockwise from east. This example illustrates the five-step method used in the analytical method in order to determine the resultant of two or more non-perpendicular vectors. The first step is to sketch the vector addition diagram. Just as a quick estimate so you have a feel for which direction each vector goes and the approximate direction that the resultant will go. Then create your xy table and use trig functions to determine the components. Place them in the table with the appropriate plus minus sign. Then add all the components in order to determine the resultant's components, the rx and ry value. Make a sketch of the triangle formed by rx and ry. Then use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the magnitude of the resultant, it would be the hypotenuse of your triangle, and use a trig function, usually the tangent function, to determine the direction of the resultant. 
Now I will demonstrate this five-step analytical method for determining the resultant of these three non-perpendicular vectors. I'll begin with the sketch. And here it is. It's a quick sketch, but what it does tell me is that I'm expecting that the resultant lies in the third quadrant. Here's the second step. I'll make a table, and then I will calculate the components of each individual vector. I use sine and cosine to find the x and y components. Then, step three, I add up all the components to, def to determine what the resultant's components are. The r, x, and r, y values are listed. They're both negative, which tells me that I'm going to have a 0.97 vector heading west added to a 5.66 kilometer vector heading south. I'll sketch that, and I'll draw the resultant. I wish to find the resultant, the hypotenuse of this right triangle, and I wish to find the direction. So I've labeled an angle theta at the tail of the resultant down inside of the right triangle. Now I use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the resultant's magnitude. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I find the square root of 32.98, and I end up with 5.5. 74 kilometers as the magnitude of the resultant. As my fifth step, I'm going to determine the, the resultant's direction. So I use a tangent function to find the angle theta. I say the side opposite theta is the longer 5.66 southern side, and the side adjacent theta is the shorter 0.97 western side. I end up getting 80.3 degrees on my calculator, and this is the value of theta. I could now define the direction as being 80.3 degrees south of west, or I could express it as a counterclockwise angle of rotation from due east. Using the CCW convention, I would say that vector r is rotated from east a 180 degrees plus another 80.3 degrees. So its CCW direction is 260.3 degrees counterclockwise from east. Well, we've done it. We've learned how to use the analytical method to add two or more non-perpendicular vectors. It's at this time in every video, I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making this learning stick. And I have some good next steps, but before I help you out with the action plan, maybe you could help us out. If you like the video, could you press the like button, maybe even subscribe to the channel, and then get notifications when new videos come out. And finally, if you have a question or comment, leave it in the comment section down below. All right, here's your action plan. The first step is from our website. We have a section called the calculator pad. In questions number 10 through 6, 16 of the vectors and projectiles chapter would make for an awesome follow-up. Here's what you get. You get a problem, you get an answer, and you get an audio guided solution. It's a great way to practice. Give it a try. Second uh, possible thing you could do as an action plan is you could check out the physics interactive section of our website and play with the vector addition simulation. You drag a few vectors onto the screen, you see their components, you add them together, you see what the resultant and the resultant's components. It's a nice little playful way to follow up on this activity. And then there's the concept builders, which is always going to give you a great fun workout. This one on component addition dovetails very well with this video. Give it a try. And finally, if you just need a quick reference at any time, you can check out the vectors and projectiles chapter of our tutorial on our website, and you can look at the component edition page with several examples worked out and explained very thoroughly. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck.